Hi, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 1st to the 15th, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Cancer, January 1st to the 15th, 2022. Cancer, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Empress and we have the Hierophant here at our root, which I love. I'm very excited about this. The Hierophant is Taurus energy. So if we have Taurus within our natal chart, this is coming through very powerfully at our root. Then we have the Ace of Swords and the Ten of Wands in our inner self. We have the Six of Cups and the Seven of Cups in our emotional self. I like that progression here. That's really quite beautiful. We're releasing something from our past to really be able to see and take hold of our dreams. Then we have in the public arena, we have the King of Wands, which is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. If we have fire sign energy within our natal chart or are born on the cusp with Leo, this is going to come out very powerfully in the public arena. And then we have the Seven of Swords. There's something about betrayal here. Now, it can be betrayal in business that we've been facing or some sort of betrayal in, in the workplace that we are looking at and redefining ourselves by. It's like, I'm not defined by this anymore. And it could have been a, a betrayal from, you know, days gone by. So just be aware of this. It doesn't have to be right instantaneously in our face, but there's something that we're working through and we're finding out that we're way more powerful than we thought we would be when it comes to facing this certain setback that we have had in our lives and it's defined us for way too long so let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of angels and spirit guides show me clearly oh goodness okay so we have the princess of wands and the princess of pentacles so fire sign energy with the princess of wands aries leo sagittarius and the princess of pentacles is earth sign energy taurus virgo capricorn what this is is underdeveloped energy because they're not queens right so here we have energy that is rather immature coming forward in the realm of our career with the wands in the realm of our finances this can be a person that says oh just do this and everything will work out great 
They don't have any real facts or any real understanding to back it up, but they're just going to keep on plowing forward. So just be mindful of this. We're really going to want to help the person out. We kind of like the ideas that they have, like the breath of fresh air that they're bringing. They need to have more substance for us to be able to move forward with. And this is also going to be for ourselves in our career, in our finances. There's an idea that we have. It needs to have more substance before we really start to pursue it or before it really starts to bring any sort of change into our our lives. So just be aware of that. Now let's look at our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. This is inspiration. This is the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is a complex chakra. It holds our creativity. It holds our sensual energy. It also holds all the trauma drama from this life and from past lives. So this is what we're going to be looking at here. We're going to be looking at the way we are inspired or how we get to be inspired in our life, not holding ourselves to old standards, old standards from past lives, old standards from, you know, our life during this existence where we might have, you know, defined ourselves in a certain way. It's looking at those definitions and saying, why am I still holding on to this? It's letting ourselves have a new dawn, have a new day, have a new brilliance and a beauty moving forward. So let's look at things astrologically speaking. So we have on the 1st of January, we have the sun trine Uranus. Now, this is a wonderful energy to begin the year with. This is a time when we're comfortable standing in our own skin and really embracing who we are. We have no problem expressing ourselves or our individuality and should let ourselves really shine. We will also be in tune with the world around us and be in tune with the inspiration and, and, and power of our thoughts that are given to us through our dreams. So just be aware of this. On the 1st of January, also, we have Mercury trying the North Lunar Node. Now, the North Lunar, now Mercury trying the North Lunar Node is another positive and powerful alignment and a great way, again, to start this new year. It is said that our life purpose is echoed between the North and South Lunar Nodes, which the North Lunar Node, if we remember, is the head of the dragon and the South Lunar Node is depicted of, as the tail of the dragon, also in astrology. So we will be finding this echo of our purpose between the body of our tenacity, the body of ourselves, between the tail of us and the head of us. We will enjoy figuring out the whys and the how comes about people and about ourselves. It's like a puzzle. We're putting it together. It's like a mystery and we're a detective. We like this. We're encouraged by this. We're, you know, fueled by this. We're also not going to take things too personally on this day, which is also fantastic and a great way to start the year. On the 2nd of January, we have the moon and we have the new moon in Capricorn. Now, Cancer, we are ruled by the moon. We're represented by the moon in in the planetary alignments, right? So we are ruled by the moon. New moons, full moons, you know, quarter moons, waxing moons, waning moons, they all mean more to us than other signs. So this is going to be very important to us and there will be a separate video done on this new moon in Capricorn. On the 2nd of January, we also have Mercury entering into Aquarius. Now Mercury loves being in Aquarius. And it's a very positive place for it because it brings a lot of positive outlook. This will be smooth sailing until like the 14th. And the 14th is when Mercury goes into retrograde. And we'll get into more about that in a little bit. On the 5th of January, Venus is sextile Neptune. Now we have Venus energy here at our root with Taurus coming in. So Taurus is ruled by Venus. So we're going to be hit by, by Venus energy much more powerfully than we expect. So just be mindful of this. This is a passionate day where we need to express our feelings. We will be highly creative and enjoy surrounding ourselves with beauty, which is something that we tend to forget about Taurians. They love to surround themselves with beauty and we're going to too. We're also going to exude a charm that will make us very attractive. So we should take advantage of that on this day. We're also going to need to take time for self-care, even if it's just a little bit of time for self-care and pampering, because it will go a long way to enhancing our mood and building up our energy vibration. The 8th of January is the sun conjunct Venus, again, amplified because of Taurus being at our root. This personifies love and peace. We need to surround ourselves with beauty and give ourselves permission to to express 
our emotions. There's going to be something here where it's like, oh, I don't want to express my emotions or, oh, I, I can't possibly. And now spirit is saying, like, do so, do so. Embrace the heart. This is a time when low energy vibration people can have a huge effect on us in a negative way. So be mindful of the people we're surrounding ourselves with. On the 10th of January, Mercury is trying Chiron. Now this is a harmonious aspect that helps us to heal ourselves and others. We will have the talent for saying the right thing at the right time. We will need to follow our own ideas and embrace ancient wisdom. We're going to find that ancient wisdom embraced with modern, you know, sensibility really is something that helps us, that helps us better our understanding of our present and really helps us propel ourselves forward. On the 11th of January, we have the sun sextile Neptune. Now this is a powerful creative time that should be utilized. Ne Neptune, Neptune, there we go, makes us highly sensitive to our surroundings. So we need to be mindful of who we are associating with and where we are. Certain energies of places can be detrimental to us. So just be mindful of this. There's also a lot of psychic potential here that can be overwhelming if we're not ready for it. So also have our minds and our souls open to that. Also on the 11th of January, Mars is squared Neptune. This alignment brings powerful varying energy. So on the one hand, we have the positive energy of bravery and glamour. And on the other hand, other hand, we have intrigue and scandal. Think of it like Hollywood, right? All that glitters is it gold. And that's also what we're going to need to be really aware of on the 11th of January. All that glitters isn't gold. This is a time to listen to our inner voice and to stand apart from the chaos of the world. On the 14th of January, we have Mercury entering into retrograde. Now, this is lessened by Mercury being in Aquarius till the 25th, but Mercury remains in, in retrograde to the 3rd till the 3rd of February. So just being mindful of this and knowing that our communication is going to be a bit wonky. It starts on the 14th. Yes, it's tempered by being in Aquarius, but not that much. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be as tempered as we would like it to be. We have the Empress. We have creative energy that we're birthing forward within this world. We're bringing something forward to ourselves, to our lives, to what we desire for ourselves and our lives that is a game changer. This is a time of expression. This is a time of greater understanding and I love it being paired with the Hierophant. The Hierophant is holding the keys to our deepest desires. The Hierophant is also saying what is traditionally true for you, not what are your orthodoxies, what is the religion you were born into or the way you were raised. It's saying what is it that if you went against this, it would be going against your soul and yourself and the way that you feel at home within your own body, within your own expression, within your own ideas. The Hierophant is our traditions, and it's what we need to embrace within ourselves to empower ourselves and to move us forward. We're going to be holding the keys to what we greatly desire. It's the keys to heaven, right? But that's a metaphor for what we greatly desire within our lives and how we're passionately and powerfully moving ourselves forward. The Hierophant is also the person in the medieval world that could not be held back. Nobody could tell the Pope what to do because the Hierophant represents the Pope. The Pope told kings and queens, emperors and empresses what to do. And that's a powerful surge, a powerful energy that we are embracing here. The energy of somebody who is listened to almost without question. So it's also intense energy. That's right here. We have the Ace of Sword. God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe has handed us a gift of knowledge and of clarity. We're cutting through so so many doubts, fears, and negativity. We're cutting through so much that has held us back and that has denied us. We're going to be seeing that we're untangling a lot. We're coming to a lot of realizations, a lot of understandings, a lot of passion, a lot of insights, and this is very, very powerful for us. There's almost a sense of like things have been all knotted up. There's been a lot of chaos. There's been a lot of doubt. There's been a lot of fear. And now clarity starts to come in. In our inner selves, we're starting to see strands of knowledge, strands of inspiration guiding us forward. Where does it lead? We're not going to be 100% sure, but we're going to need to follow it. The swords are also a sign of nobility. 
in the medieval world. You would be killed if you were a peasant, if you were not of the noble class and you held a sword. So being mindful of the power that's being given to us by having the sword, by having this like noble right to move forward is going to be extraordinary. It also moves us to the 10 of wands. We're looking at all the burdens that we've been carrying within our life. Everything that has been dragging us down, everything that has been making us doubt ourselves, everything that has been overwhelming. And we're going to see how that has been affecting us. It's like living our lives only looking at the mud on our shoes, not being able to see the beauty of the world. And this is going to be a time where we need to say to ourselves, what is bringing me down so much that I am not even able to embrace and enjoy my own life, my own self, what I desire, where it is that I want to be, you know, who it is that I am. This becomes a game changer for us. And we start to free ourselves more and more and more. With the Six of Cups, there is something from our past that we are bringing into our present. It's something that, you know, it's thoughts in our head that keep tumbling around. It's kind of like they wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true. This can either be from our parents, our guardians, as we were going, growing up, a teacher, a sibling, you know, a lover that we, that we broke up with, that left just with saying nasty things or that just tried to eat away at our own self-confidence. And this is a time where we're looking at the words that we carry within us because we carry these wounded words within us. And when we're feeling down, when we're feeling overwhelmed, when, you know, we, might not be feeling down or overwhelmed at all, but we just get sideswiped because we're not really thinking of anything. And these words come forward, something echoes, something triggers them. And all of a sudden we're back in that place. And what spirit is saying here is why are we carrying this within our hearts? Why are we letting ourselves be pulled down? And yes, we can say letting ourselves because, you know, there is this sense of nothing can wound us unless we let it wound us. And so there's a need to look at it now, either with a therapist, with a spiritual advisor, with, you know, through journaling, through listening to podcasts. I love Estelle, Esther Perel, Esther. Yes. Esther Perel is fantastic. She's on YouTube. She's has her own podcast. She's a beautiful psychologist who just works with the mind so, so magnificently. And this is going to be a time where we're peeling back the layers, where we're seeing, seeing ourselves, we're seeing the trauma that we hold onto. These are also the beautiful moments, the times where we're looking like, why can't I recreate that? It's because we can't walk into the past. Everything isn't going to measure up and we're not going to be able to heal old wounds unless we see the heart that was scarred, unless we acknowledge the person who was in that vulnerable position or who loved that person so much that when it comes to the holidays, you know, it's just not the same without them. When it comes to, you know, living our lives, we want to, to tell them about it, but they might not be here with us. And so this is a time where we really embrace healing and it moves us to our dreams. What has happened in our past, okay, that has made us doubt our dreams as we move forward to our present that makes us think, well, I can't let it be too happy because when things were too happy, everything fell apart. I can't let myself, you know, be too confident because when I was too confident, I had the rug pulled out from underneath me. These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves because our dreams are coming forward. Our dreams are embracing our hearts and our souls and ourselves, and we need them to come out during this time. This is the angel year. You know, this year equals the angel number 222, two, two, which is of new beginnings. And this is a time of new beginnings. And so we need to look at the dreams that we want to bring forward. We need to look at the passion that we have in our lives for ourselves and for the world around us and let that become so much more than we ever realized it could be. But we need to take our dreams from being shoved in the back closet, you know, to being something that we'll get to later and say, no, I get to bring it forward now. No, I get to bring forward my heart. No, I get to embrace my soul now. And this becomes a time of transformation. In the public arena, we really need to embrace the King of Wands. This is transformation. This is confidence. This is a surety. This is a sense of success, kind of being that fat cat, that person who knows what it is that they want and absolutely knows that they're going to get it, even if they're not sure at all. They just exude this confidence. We need to exude this confidence, that kind of fake it till you make it type of thing. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't sit there and try to rip it apart, which is kind of what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to emotionally say, oh no, I can't possibly. We need to birth this forward. We need to bring this forward in our lives. And it's not going to happen if we are scared, if we are overwhelmed, if we, you know, doubt and deny ourselves. 
here with the king of wands we need to embrace the magic the transformation the fire the passion that is within us and as a for as a sword is forged we are forging ourselves not kindly you know a sword is not forged kindly it is forged through pounding it is forged through heat and it is forged through unbelievable pressure and that's what we're putting ourselves through to be able to get to that place that we desperately want to be to be able to transform and this is a time where we're looking at that and saying there's so much more to me than I ever realized there's so much more to me than I ever knew and now is the time to let my fire to let my passion to let my you know power really shine through we're going to be surprising ourselves it moves us to the seven of swords we've been betrayed we have definitely been betrayed. Now it can be at work. It can be in accordance to our dreams and what we deeply desire. We could have betrayed ourselves by giving up on ourselves. We could have been betrayed by others, by them giving up on us, by us failing at certain situations, by us thinking, oh no, I can't. And what spirit is saying here is that we need to gather up our information. We need to see what it is that we greatly desire and we need to leave the rest behind. And now it is time for us to start moving forward in our knowledge, in our understanding, without telling anybody else, but saying, this is what I want for me. Nobody is going to forge my future, but me. Nobody's going to make this happen, but me. And now I get to embrace that kingly energy. And remember in medieval times, a king was like the paramount of what we should be. That power, that all consuming power, that force, that brilliance, that that kind of like might equals right type of mentality here. And that's going to be what we're embracing, not being like a medieval person, because I mean, come on, society would not uphold that at all, but very much saying, I am moving forward in this force of becoming. I am moving forward in this power that is me. Yes, I have been betrayed, but that has made me wiser. I now know the levels that people will go to hurt. You know, I now understand that not everything is done with the kindness of, of the heart. You know, I see the world for as it is, or as I am able to see it right now, with the veil lifted from my eyes, with, you know, the hurts and the pains coming forward, with the chaos being acknowledged, and I'm not letting it hold me back. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the hermit. We need to not fall too far into ourselves, because that's going to be our reaction. It's going to be like, oh my gosh, I just need to, you know, hide into me. And what spirit is saying here is like, no, 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 no. Look into yourself, yes, but then also move forward in that knowledge, move forward in that understanding. We're also going to be very drawn to people who are like, all the answers are inside. Yes, all the answers are inside, but we also have to step out into the world to embrace the answers, to embrace our passion, to embrace what we desire, not cut ourselves off from the world. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is forgiveness, the heart chakra. This is a time where we need to embrace our hearts and forgive. Forgive everything that we cannot change. Forgive those who have wronged us, yes, but also forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves for being too naive. Forgive ourselves for being too young to do anything. Forgive ourselves for trusting the wrong person, for loving the wrong person, for taking the job that wasn't right for us. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Because we have all made mistakes and we can persecute ourselves forevermore if we, if we wanted to. Or we could say, we all make mistakes and I forgive. And now I move forward in a path of love, in a path of healing, in a path of emotional truth. We move then to our subconscious rooted energy, and that is the hermit. We need to turn inward. At our root, we need to turn inward just as much as spirit is warning us that we can get lost turning inward. But we need to have our dreams and our passions, and we need to look within ourselves and say, how do I bring this forward? and then find it and then bring it forward, not just live there because it's going to be so easy for us to get caught up in our inner selves and let ourselves only be within our mind, only be within our hearts, only be within the small sphere of our own being. And spirit says, let it shine. It moves us to our subconscious inner self. And that is again, the hermit. What are we hoarding away? So here we have the dragon hoarding the gold. And what's so interesting, if we look at the stories of the mythologies of dragons, dragons take away gold and riches, maidens, you know, everything that the medieval world, we can use the medieval world again, valued. Because if we're going to go off of the chevalier tales and the understanding of the dragon, we really do have that here. But what we're going to see is what are we hoarding within ourselves? What are we not letting shine in the light of day? Because we think it's too precious or we don't think it's ready yet. Or, you know, 
we're too overwhelmed to to let it out because it's too dear to us so here a spirit saying let it shine don't hoard it away like a dragon don't it moves us to our subconscious emotional self and that is the seven of wands subconsciously and emotionally it's going to be so easy for us to be in that fight or flight mode to be in that mode of i have to defend what it is that i really want and i have to know that people are going to be more than ready to take it from me we have the repeat of the number seven the number seven means that we get called out on all our lies the little tiny ones the bigger ones you know we get called out on them but the seven also tells us that we are very drawn to ancient knowledge to esoteric knowledge to deeper wisdom what are we fighting what is it easier to fight than it is to accept and why is it that we are on fight mode because it it drains our energy it stops us from being able to move forward the way that we really want to the way that we really need to and it, it becomes all consuming so just be mindful of this it moves us to our subconscious public arena self and that is the high priestess the veil is being lifted from our eyes, which I believe Spirit said earlier. You know, the veil is being lifted from our eyes and we are seeing things so much more clearly, so much more openly, so much more honestly than we have before. And as this veil is being lifted, we're not falling into the same traps, the same lies, the same dece deceits. And this also has us connecting with our deeper emotional knowledge, our deeper sense of who we are and where it is that we want to be and what it is that we desire from our world. We're becoming more in tune with ourselves, which can be astoundingly overwhelming. We're also becoming more in tune with the psychic world, with the intuitive world, with the world of understanding and connection, which again can be overwhelming, but it's going to be so beautiful in its reveal, in its you know connection with the waking world. It's kind of like the waking world and what we deeply dream of, what we deeply hope for, our spiritual world is coming together. And that's where the power is. That's where the, the connection is. That's where the brilliance lies. Okay. All right, Cancer. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.